So I'm just gonna show my progress with the middle splits. This was what I done two days ago, so I had to go at sliding down into middle splits, which is a good test of the strength through the range, not just the flexibility. Uh, it still needs a little bit of work. I'm not getting totally down, um, and I'm having to lean forward slightly in that bottom position. Um, so this is where I started back in 2014 as that top picture. 2020, like I say, was a couple of days ago. Um, my biggest pro uh, progress, however, was from 2014 to 2018, where I got pretty close to the floor. But what you'll notice, I'm gonna bring up a picture in a second, what you'll notice there is that most of the range came actually from my hamstrings when I was doing the head to toe. So if you look there, my quads look really weird. Um, it's because I'm nearly hyperextending at the knee from the head to toe work. So I was doing the wushu bouncing um, under Edo's training. Um, which made my hamstrings very flexible and my calf very flexible um, but didn't necessarily give me the best middle split position because I weren't spending enough time in middle splits it was more just on the hamstrings. Here's a good comparison between the 2018 dates that's the one on the left and today so 2020 on the right you'll see the 2014 position sorry 2018 position I'm dropping backwards so I get to that certain depth and then I fall back uh, where 2020, I'm able to go down and hold that position, even if it, even if it is, whoa, whoa, even if it is sticking my hips back slightly. Like I said, I'm not just training middle splits. I'm training lots of other movements that are helping my middle split. Um, so I'm just going to take you through exercises that I've used over the past um, four to six years. Uh, Cossack squats, um, something I've played with, uh, not done too much of, but I definitely include in some some parts of your training. Um, I have to be careful again because I'm tight in the hip but I'm long in the hamstring from the wushu bouncing that I overuse that too much. Um, also the horse stance position, something that Ido made me do a little bit but um, I actually didn't do that often. So um, I can get into an okay position with like a five stance if you know what that means, you take the feet out five steps, I can get to an okay position. The one that I use the most is this um, stretch. So I'm just going as far down as I can with an open hip into my, my deepest middle split position hold and then I close the hip and go as deep as I can. Now you can rest on something, see I'm resting on the box here on my chest or you can rest on your elbows or your hands on the floor in that closed position um, and just hang out there. So both time in the open hip and time in the closed hip position. So this is another one I use especially in the hands, handstands a lot in the classes. Um, it gives people a rest in this position. So it allows you to focus on allowing the feet just to get um, happy to be there. A lot of people in the middle split position don't like to hang out there. So this one really gives you time in the position. So you can just chill out and relax and get more comfortable there. There's a lot of protection around that, that, that hip. So just spending time in the position. So straddle position, but just working uh, feet as wide as possible. And here I'm pushing the, hip, the groin towards the wall and using the feet to help me come backwards. Uh, this is a fun one, I use it in, um, occasionally use it when I'm stretching by myself, uh, but mainly use it in the classes just for a little bit of fun. It creates a bit of tension around um, the feet pulling outwards and the hip wanting to come forwards. Then the same thing, so sitting in straddle, how taking the feet as wide as possible. So just sitting there and actively pulling backwards. Now if you can't sit comfortably in straddle, you'll need to raise the butt up on some mats or something. And then the biggie, I reckon this one has given me the most progress. I do it often, um, it's the straddle up. So being able to open and close and come out of that position. So it's good for your straddle pancake, it's good for your press to handstand. It's just an open and close in the hip position um, and also work in distance between the feet. So hence it's helping with the middle splits. And I've worked up to be able to do that with no hands. I'm showing there with the mats, if you need the mats to raise the, the hip up, that's a good place to start. Then it's the sliding, so the Van Tam type, type movement. Um, and just spending time there again in the open hip position and then placing the hands down on the floor or onto a box if you're not quite so flexible and allowing the hips to close and going as deep as you can. So that's a quick overview of all the exercises I've used um, to get where I am with the middle splits. I've still got some work to do. I wanna um, open up so I've got that active range so I can use it in the handstand and have full splits there. This is where I started um, in my active range in the handstand and this is where I am now. Um, it still needs some work but it's getting there. Um, in terms of training it, in terms of which exercise is you need personally, um, I would recommend you get a coach or someone to assess where you're at um, and also, um, it's wherever you're gonna spend the most time. 
So you can have the best exercise plan in the world, but if you don't follow it, it's not gonna work. So just find a couple of exercises that you're comfortable to hang out in. Um, maybe the one up against the wall, maybe the one where you slide down um, with the mats or with no mats, just spend time in an open hip position and spend time in a closed hip position in the splits. I hope that's helped. Um, thumbs up would be appreciated, subscribe would be great. I will speak to you next time. Any videos you'd like, stick them in the comments below and I'll speak to you next time.